Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to do something that a lot of people uh, are always concerned about. I'm going to take a road trip in Tesla. I'm going to go a little bit over 500 miles, so I'm going to get a chance to kind of eat my own words on the whole statement. Hey, if you're driving 500 miles or less, it's just about the same as driving a gas car. So uh, I'm going to be leaving here. I'm going to drive into Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, we're going to you're going to follow along. We're going to see how painful it is. All right, so we're gonna look at a couple things while we're doing this. Uh, first is, how much longer is this actually gonna take than if I was driving a comparable gas car? Uh, so Google Maps says it's about a 10 hour drive, uh, about a nine hour drive, sorry. So I figure I'm gonna add an hour to that with you know stops, especially for something that long. Um, so I figure if I'm, if I'm around 10 hours, then that's fairly comparable to if I was driving a, driving a gas car. Uh, second thing we're gonna look at is, how much does it cost to drive across um, you know, a 500 mile period or 500 mile distance. So we're going to drive, um, but we're, we're going to be comparing this to a vehicle that's comparable to this car. So uh, this is a car I take on a racetrack. This is a car that I you know, drag race with. Um, it's not a, it's not a Camry. Uh, so it's probably a 500. If you're going to drive a 500 horsepower car someplace, are you going to drive it halfway across the country? I, I don't know. Um, so we're going to, we're going to take a look at that and see uh, see a vehicle that's kind of comparable to that. What would it what would it actually cost to drive something across if you're you know paying for premium fuel and stuff like that? Um, and then uh, last thing is, hey, what, what's going to go wrong during the trip that that's going to cause any sort of problems? So if I was driving some high horsepower car across the country, um, you know, there's a pretty good chance that something's going to break, especially if I'm kind of fooling around with it. So we're, we're going to take a look at all that stuff uh, to answer the question really, like, hey. Is it painful to have an EV as the as your primary uh, driver or as your primary vehicle? And uh, I think the answer is no. And I'm making the video, but I promise I will be truthful about it. <laughs> now let's buckle up to uh, drive on a highway for a long time, a really long time. All right. So this morning I left at 10:55 a.m. with a battery state of charge 100%. Uh, so this is. Charge up to 100%, precondition the battery. Those are the things that you're supposed to do if you're a good Tesla nerd. And uh, I'm driving out. Uh, so what I would like to say is that this is probably not representative of doing an EV road trip in every type of EV. Uh, so Tesla's got its own uh, supercharger network. Generally, it's a little bit faster than uh, anything you're gonna get anywhere else. And generally, their superchargers are along the road. Uh, like the highways that you're actually going to be driving on. So un unlike Electrify America, for instance, which is like you're going to a lot of Walmart parking lots or um, you know malls or stuff like that, uh, the Tesla ones are oftentimes at gas stations like Wawa, stuff like that, places that um, you normally would stop on a road trip. So it makes it a little bit more seamless than it otherwise would be. You, you kind of want to live at the bottom of the battery is really the the key so you know only charge as much as necessary to make it to the next place where you're planning on charging you don't want to you know charge extra because that is extra time and generally the higher you charge the battery to uh, the slower it's going to go so that's the goal we're gonna see if we can meet, meet that all right so one of the biggest hacks that you're able to get out of these teslas is autopilot so i have the full self-driving uh, suite on this car I don't have the full self-driving beta, uh, but one of the things that it does have right now is the kind of enhanced autopilot. And so you'll see, I'm just kind of coasting along. It's got the blue lines on. Everybody's seen autopilot before, uh, but they, you do not realize how much of a difference it makes when you're driving uh, when you're driving a car at a long distance. It is such a such a, a saver in terms of um, you know just energy that you're using while you're driving. So all these like stupid little things, uh, keeping it within the lines, car already does that. So you're looking out, you're looking for major problems that are gonna come up on the road. Uh, and just really takes a lot of stress off the off long trips. So that's the biggest deal uh, when we're driving these things in long distance. It's a comfortable car, you know, everything's relatively quiet in here. And uh, the, the autopilot really makes a huge difference in, in reducing fatigue, especially on long drives.
So here is how most of the superchargers are set up. So I, I gotta dig around in here and figure out where exactly they are. But as you can see, just right off the, high, off the highway, it makes it fairly easy. And found them. So you may have seen as we're driving along a bunch of these little red dots. So that those little red dots with a number in them, that actually says how many um, spots are open. And every single one of those is a Tesla supercharger. So if you're thinking about it, uh, and you're a little bit worried about the range or finding places, that's a real easy way um, to kind of feel comfortable. If you you know have changes, you want to go to the bathroom or something like that. It's an easy way to be able to go and find it. So with that, I'm going to plug in and we're going to get to the next part. All right, real quick, quick to recap. Uh, so it is 13.53. I left at 10.55, so just under three hours, went 210 miles. Uh, at 300 watt hours a mile, which is pretty terrible for the first leg, uh, but just about a three hour trip, 63 kilowatt hours used. And we are stopping, and this is going to be about a 20 minute stop according to um, the, a better route planner. And so, for those who are kind of unfamiliar, you see uh, right up in this corner uh, that is the speed. So, right, like I said, I want to show up as low battery as possible. So, I'm at 12%, so it's going to get close to max speed for the uh, supercharger. I believe this is a 150. And so you'll see about it's going at 139 kilowatts and that's that's the equivalent of about 590 miles per hour. All right, so I'm walking back. It's uh, about, I've been here about 15 minutes or so. Uh, ran over to the bathroom just in time. Uh, so I always say my bladder fills up a little bit or long before the uh, battery runs out. So I hit the bathroom, grabbed some food, and I'm walking back to the car right now. Uh, so I, I'm probably gonna end up staying here a little bit longer than it needs to charge just because I wanna be able to eat. But, success so far, huh? So, still charging. And not too many bugs yet. It's pretty clean just from all the rain, especially early on on that trip. Uh, also, the reason I'm running getting about 300 watt hours is those wheels. So uh, the non-stock wheels just don't have the same aerodynamics uh, that the that the stock ones do. So that's where you see a little bit of the change. As you can see, I'm sitting here eating my breakfast of champions. I've been here about 20 minutes total. That's just how long it took me to go to the bathroom, get the food and get back to the car. Um, and this is, a, so this website's a better route planner. It's a really good way if you are traveling uh, to kind of it's a, the most it says it's the most efficient uh, trek there. So as you can see, I'm charging right now. It knows it's the uh, it pulls the data from the car already. That website does, and so it's got two more stops. So it's looking like from here I'll travel another two hours, charge for another 13 minutes, travel another two hours, charge for 15 minutes, and then I'll travel another hour and a half and I'll reach my destination. So that is the plan for the rest of the day. But it's, I'm going to charge a little bit longer than I needed to here just because I, I did not have enough time to eat. All right, update. I'm enough of a fat kid that I sat here long enough that it now says I only need one stop to make it. So one more stop on the way there. And my gut is now full, my bladder is empty, and the battery is relatively full. So that's what we're looking for. All right, so heading out again, 1428 at 81%.
to show a quick update. So I've been driving for about, uh, I think, an hour and a half, two hours since the last time we talked. Um, and you'll see, so it's predicting about 4%. We're going to show up with about 4%. I'm at 13% less uh, battery. Uh, so, like I said, it predicted at, I think, 6% a couple hours ago. I've been driving for, you know, two hours, and it, it's pretty much spot on. So that the only difference in the percentage is really accounted for by me stepping on the throttle a couple of times when I didn't need to. Anyway, um, just to, so that's what I'm talking about is you just got to have a little bit of faith in the system and the, in the tech and uh, just understand that it, just because it's low doesn't mean you're going you're gonna to be stranded someplace. Stop number two. Plugging her in. Done. All right, so you can see that last leg, about 184 miles, 56 kilowatt hours. Uh, so I was driving again about two and a half hours um, to get to this spot. And so I'm about halfway through charging for this next one. Actually, almost completely charged already. All right, finishing up the charging session here. I got 17.32, so been on the ground about 30 minutes or so. Uh, all the way up to 72, and should roll into the hotel right around 7%. So let's get started. stretch right now got about 72 miles left uh, it says I'm gonna be showing up a little bit like right around uh, 2000 tonight so that means so at the beginning we said uh, Google said about uh, nine hours or so to get uh, go the 520 miles that means I'm gonna be coming in uh, right at the nine hour mark so uh, that's with me eating a full meal at one of the stops and then stopping to get coffee a second time. Um, so, like I said, two charging stops along the way, about 523 miles, and I, I'm gonna go through and I'll, I'll show you the Google thing. I'm gonna do the um, the actual cost, how much it actually costs to, to drive this distance. But basically, as you can see, you know, it's a, it's a day trip, not really any sort of issue, and no longer than it would take, you know, driving any other type of vehicle uh, for this route and that's with traffic and stuff like that so hey like when, when people people get worried about like what's the range or about how long you got to charge it and it's like it's not really that big a freaking deal <laughs> it's like it's the, the end point the reason why you don't see a whole lot of tesla road trip being like videos is because it's really boring it's, it's like it's like driving really any other car except it's really easy because it's got the autopilot i got the no hands mom Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll close up with some of the, the actual hard data on it, uh, but I did want to give a quick update while there's still some light out. Uh, just let you know, I'm alive. It's easy. This, like, this makes it, this car speak is so easy, man. <laughs> uh, but I will, I will catch up with you in just a little bit when we close this out. <laughs> All right, pulling into the Holiday Inn Express right now got 1948 so just shy of nine hours i got my four percent battery so supposed to be destination chargers here i'm going to track those down real quick all right so right there tesla vehicle parking so i'm gonna plug in now but we made it so i've been getting these warnings for the last like 10 miles or so battery very low you're gonna die, so on and so forth. So there, there's really no excuse to really ever run out. That it's always telling you. <laughs> and so you see 1949 as we pull into the spot, and then I go down to trips. And so this last leg, 158 miles in about two hours, and used 49 kilowatts. 
and this is basically the process each time. You just roll up. I got just these Tesla destination chargers. You grab it. These are well, same as what you got at the house. So these are slow chargers. Um, about seven kilowatts usually. This one seems to be dead. That one's good though. That's what you're looking for is the green. So, plugged in, it's talking, now it's charging. And that is a Tesla road trip in a sports car. All right, so what I have up now is the stats from the trip. Uh, so you can see across the top, I already kind of covered this, drove about 550 miles. Uh, Google Maps estimated that whole trip was going to take um, around about nine hours, and that was what the actual time was. So the cost of driving an EV for 550 miles was zero in terms of actual time. The costs for the Model 3 performance are actually the worst case scenario. So this is if everything was a s actual supercharger costs. Uh, I think my actual cost for the trip was about $44. I uh, hope this answers some questions. And like I said before, like, subscribe, tell me what you want to see.